Gear should never be the depending factor as a filmmaker, but doesn't mean I don't like to talk about it. Here are five pieces of gear that changed my life as a filmmaker. What's up guys, my name is Dax Brule, creator from Ottawa, Ontario, and you know, today we're going to talk about gear. Let's talk about gear, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Okay, sorry, but I usually don't talk a lot about gear. I don't think gear is something that filmmakers should be talking about, even though a very uh, cultural thing in the filmmaker community, people like to brag about their gear and what they use. I don't think it really makes that big of a difference, but in the end, you know, it can do some good for you as a filmmaker. So we're gonna talk about gear today. We're gonna talk about five pieces of gear that changed my life as a filmmaker. Super important to invest in these things. I think they will help you out a lot. First one we're gonna start with is the color checker. Now, if you've never heard of a color checker, pretty much what it does is it checks the colors in your video to make sure they are represent, you know, a real color spectrum. It helps you with color correction. So when you're color grading your footage, you have two steps, color correction and color grading. Color correction is bringing your footage back to regular looking video. Set Rec 709 is usually what you're gonna go for. And what this does is you put it up and you're able to change the color using softwares like DaVinci Dissolve or a Premiere Pro Lumetri Color. And you're able to look at the colors that it on those screen and make sure they match what they actually should be. So it's really simple to use. All you're gonna do is just open up the color checker, put it in front of your camera, and then you're gonna go through all the colors and you're gonna make sure that they all match the correct color scheme. You can also use this for exposure, which is great for the color checker. The one I have is the little X-Ray Passport Pro. They are a little expensive. All these gear, by the way, will be listed in the link in bio. So check them out if you want to. But they can also be used for exposure. If you open it up here, there's a little gray card, as you can see here, and this will help you check your exposure. You're gonna wanna make sure that this is at a certain value. There's a chart right here on screen that shows you pretty much all the values of what you want. Moving on to number two is going to be a top handle. Now a top handle is super great for getting that handheld footage look. Always before I used to always struggle in getting that good smooth handheld footage and I think a top handle is the key to this success here. One thing you will need is a camera cage to attach it usually. Usually it doesn't go into the hot shoe mount. You do have to make that initial extra investment into a camera cage which is also a useful item because pretty much what it lets you do is attach different things onto your camera anywhere you want. But the top handle allows you to use the gravity of the camera to smoothen out the footage. If you put a lot of weight under the camera, it'll make the footage smoother because there'll be less chance of a jitter because it's so heavy. And that's what the top handle is doing. It's also a very comfortable way to hold the camera, whether you're shooting, whether you're not shooting, just holding the top handle will make it really comfortable. I recommend you get a top handle with a rubber grip, not a metal grip, because especially here in Canada, when you're shooting outside in the winter, metal grip can get cold. And also it's a lot more grippy, this leather grip than that metal grip, which can slip from your hand. So that's a top handle for you guys. The next piece of gear I'm going to talk about is the recorder. I can't actually show you this one right now because I'm recording on it, but the recorder is pretty much going to be a three in one kind of recording system. Most people usually when they start, they're going to buy a USB mic, which plugs into your computer and you can record through that, or they're going to plug in a uh, on camera shotgun mic, which just plugs into the camera. Those are both great, but the recorder really lets you step up your game in audio recording. It has two functions. The first function is itself is a mic by itself. It has two um, inputs. It has a left and a right channel making a stereo mic. So you can record really great audio straight from it. It's really good for capturing not very specific audio. So voices, you know, it works for my voice here, but what it really does well is catching ambient sound. So if you want to get a room tone or you want to get, you know, a river flowing, use your recorder out in the field and you can capture that audio piece. You can re-input it back into the video when you're editing. This is me using the on-camera microphone. This is me using my external recorder. It has two XLR inputs and also has double A inputs, I believe. It's like the bigger version of the aux cord that you can plug in external microphones and record directly to it. So if you are running a podcast or you're running, you know, an interview or something and you have two mics, you can input both those mics into here and then you can check the levels on the recorder. You can listen in and your audio guy, all he needs is this little recorder and he's able to get two channels going on the go because it's such a small thing to bring around. So, you know, let's say you're doing an interview on the run. You got this recorder and you're able to get that interview and high quality sound instead of having to bring a big audio interface system with you. Next up is a Joby tripod. Now this is not going to be useful for everyone of course, but for me it's changed the game because I love to do behind the scenes content and also it's just such a good way to carry your gear around. Pretty much a Joby tripod, one of the most popular tripod for vloggers out there, is going to be a tripod that's super flexible and mendable. It's also very small and this is just great because when you're out on the go and you want to put your camera down, it kind of sucks if you have to put it straight on the ground, you know, it also sucks, you know, if you have to carry the camera all weird. This just 
just gives you a good grip to hold it but not only that but also place it on the ground it has so many different uses because you know you never know when you'll need a little tripod to set up a shot to set up you know a time lapse different things like that it's just such a useful thing to have that tripod and carrying a real tripod around is just such a hassle this lets you, you know you can put it on a table and it looks like a regular tripod because that's such a high height one of the things i like to use this most is when i'm shooting regular footage i like to put a little phone holder in there and i put my phone and i record behind the scenes of me shooting and then i have that behind the scenes content and i can do a match video with you know the actual video and me behind the scenes it just works super well if i'm trying to capture that behind the scenes and the last piece of gear is going to be some step up ring so nd filters if you don't know what nd filter is i recommend you search it up but it's pretty much sunglasses for your video it'll let you get less light in so that you can bring down your shutter speed and you can make that footage look more cinematic but most people always just buy the nd filter that fits their lens size they never think about oh i'm going to change lenses oh i'm going to get different lenses and that's a mistake and that's what these step up rings do is step up filters so if you have bigger filters than your lens actually fits on then you can get these and it's pretty much like an adapter that goes through so what i recommend doing is getting a step up ring for every single step up that you could imagine you need and then get the biggest size filter so let's for example here mine goes all the way up to 82 millimeters so i got an 82 millimeter nd filter sorry screw that on and then any single lens that i get will always fit that it just saves you so much money in the long run having these step up rings so you can always pretty much fit on an nd filter on any of your lenses and you never really have to buy new gear this is just a good money saving tip and also just a really good piece of gear so again link in bio for all these pieces of gear let me know if this video helped again gear is not the most important guys gear is not going to be the limiting factor for how creative you are and how your videos do so I recommend you not, you do not focus on it. But if you were interested in any piece of gear, I recommend you get them because they helped me out so much. Gear in the end is just a time saver, in my opinion, it helps you save time in the effect you're trying to do. But usually you can get pretty much any effect or any video or any storyline out that you wish with any piece of gear. No question of the day for you guys. Do you guys own any of these pieces of gear? Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to know if you own any of these pieces of gear. As always, my name is Dax Brule. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. I've got new videos coming out every single week. Gently tap that like button if you enjoyed this video and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every single time i drop a new video on tuesday thursday saturday and sunday stay tuned creators keep creating see you guys in the next one peace